Hello. In this video, I'm going to be showing the easiest way to make roads in Unreal Engine 5. I'm Tommy from Avigai Studios, and this is our first Unreal Engine product we are launching to simplify road making. In this tutorial, we will be looking at all three blueprints available in this pack. Timestamps are in the description so you can skip to what you want to see. To start using this pack, you will need to download the Geometry Script plugin. Go to Edit, then Plugins, and type in Geometry Script. This plugin is experimental, so weigh the risks of including it in your project, because it may lead to an increase of bugs or crashing. However, by the end of this tutorial, you'll see how to convert all your created roads into static meshes, which can be used in any project, regardless if the Geometry Script plugin is installed. After the plugin is installed, we can start creating our roads. I'll start out by going to the Overview Map, which is in the Dynamic Road System folder, and then Maps. This map contains all the blueprints, and we're going to start by looking at the main road system blueprint. You can find this by going up the directory, and then going in the blueprints folder, and then BP road system. We are going to drag it into the level and go over its options. The first thing we can see in the details panel are the materials. The pack comes with three material instances, which are the main road material, and then the white and yellow line materials. These can be changed with your own materials, but it does use the World Align Texture Nodes to prevent material stretching. Moving on to the first detail panel, we can see Update Connected Roads variable, and we will go more into that later when we talk about the Road Connection Blueprint. Next is the Road Width, which changes the width of the road. Nothing too fancy. The unit is in centimeters, which means this road is 7.5 meters before the edges start to fall off. And a quick tip is that if you ever need help remembering what a variable option is meant to do, you can hover over the variable like this. The next option is grading percent, which is the amount the road is raised in the middle. This is helpful in the real world for rainwater to drain off the road so that it doesn't pull up in the middle of the street. This can be changed to zero so that it is completely flat, or go all the way to 5%, which is the most graded road you would realistically see. The next option is the road height scale, which is how tall the road is. By default, the height of the road is 25 centimeters, which seems tall, but note that some of it will be below the ground. If you need less than that, you can set it to 0.5, which is half scale, and the math equates that to being 12 and a half centimeters. You do have to be careful of going too low or you will clip through the ground. You can also make it comically high. The next option is to make the road a straight path, which is helpful if you don't want the road to curve as much. The next variable called actors to ignore when snapping to ground is a long name, but does as it says. To show an example, it's what allows this road to go under the bridge. You can see when I erase the actors in the variable, it snaps the road upwards onto the bridge. So I can add two elements back to the variable and use the dropper to select the road and then the bridge. And now the road is positioned where it was before. If we go back to our previous road, we can see how the roundabout option works. But first, let's create more road points and curve the road. We can do this by selecting the road and then the point we want to edit. You can move the point around and it will dynamically update. If you hold the Alt button on your keyboard while dragging a point, you will see a new point is created. And the new point does not have to be created at the end of the spline, it can be created in the middle, and the road points will order itself correctly to fit the new point. You can also select a point and delete it. Now that we know how to create the shape of the road we want, we can go back to the option of having it be a loop road. All this does is connect the start of the road with the end of the road which is very handy for roundabouts. Moving on to the road markings options, we can control whether we want the double yellow lines and white lines to appear. The unique feature of this is that the road lines are additional pieces of geometry built into the road. You can see this by looking at the next option, which is the road line offset. If we increase it to a very high value, we can see the lines as separate pieces of geometry. By default, it is just slightly hovering above the road, which is hardly noticeable. But if we make the value zero, we can see that it can clip through the road geometry. The coordinate section is very simple. It has one variable that is in charge of overriding the road point position. 
The road point positions are recorded in world space, meaning that if you knew the world coordinate you wanted the road point to go to, you could plug it in and it would go there. For example, I could place a cylinder in the level at x0 and y negative 1000. I can then go into the road point override variable and set it to the same value. Sure enough, the road point is exactly on top of the cylinder. The next section is the OSM panel. That will be talked about in the next video in this series, but to summarize it, we developed a supplemental program for this pack so that you can use real world road points from the OpenStreetMap database and import those roads into your project in a matter of minutes. If we scroll down a little further, we can see the Static Mesh Options panel. The first option is to bake the Dynamic Mesh to a Static Mesh. We will do that in just a second, but let's first take a look at the Static Mesh Asset Path variable. This variable will take a directory path and save your Static Mesh there. If we hover over the variable, we can see the description says by default it will create a folder for your assets if none is specified. So let's not enter a path and test that. We will bake to the static mesh and now notice the asset directory is filled in and if we go up a couple folder directories, we can see the new folder and the static mesh in that folder. We can inspect the static mesh and see the triangles by going to show and then complex collision. We can close this window and check the last variable, preview static mesh. Now you do need to bake the mesh to a static mesh at least once in order to see this. Otherwise, this variable will just make your dynamic mesh disappear while it's on. But if it has been baked before, like we just did, we can turn it on and we can see the static mesh without any materials on it. You can assign the same materials as the dynamic mesh and it will look identical to what you had. A couple more notes about this panel. If the preview is on, any changes to the dynamic mesh will not be reflected and you can actually see a message say that if you have your output log on and you try to change a variable. The last note is that every time you bake your dynamic mesh, it will overwrite your last save static mesh if it has the same name. And remember, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you bake all your dynamic mesh to static meshes and use those, there's no need to have the geometry script plugin installed when you build and release your project. That concludes the main road system blueprint. Now we are going to be moving on to the road connector blueprint. We can see in the overview map this example of a road connector connecting two roads. Let's add another road connector to the level by dragging the blueprint into the scene. Let's connect this example road with the road we just made. In the connected roads detail panel, you'll see a main connected road variable and a secondary connected road variable. Expand the options for the main connected road and use the dropper of connected road to select our main road. You'll see the blueprint trying to figure out the geometry, but we still need to connect the secondary road. So let's grab the dropper of that variable and select the road we made before. You can see it is connected, but it's not quite right. There are two spline points that can be moved around to make the road shape more normal. Now let's get back to the other variables. In the main connected road panel, we have two other options. The first one is used to connect the other type of blueprint, the one we haven't covered yet, so that roads can connect to parking lots and intersections. It's best to only have a road or a crossing slash lot blueprint attached, but it will default to choosing one over the other. The point of connection seen below specifies which spline point of the main road to connect to. If we move it up to 1, we can see that it has trouble because this main road only has two spline points, and there's no room to start a connection at the end. There is a solution to making connect in the middle, which we'll go over in a second. But first, let's talk about the variable connection point. The secondary road can only connect at the start or the end of the road. As you can see, it can switch to whatever side makes the most sense. 
The road points you see below can't be edited directly, but you can read them. The Dynamic Mesh Options panel solves the problem we mentioned before about connection. You can use Shift Main Road Connection to move the connection point starting from the spline point it's connected to. You can then use the connection width to adjust the width to your needs. The last detail panel is the Static Mesh Options that work the exact same way as the main road system. Alright, now let's take a look at the final blueprint. This is the crossing slash lot blueprint, and it's meant to be used for any crossings, intersections, and parking lots. Basically anything that does not conform to a typical road shape. It's very easy to use, so let's drag one in. And we can see that it starts with four points. Just as with the main road, you can select the actor and then any spline point and move it anywhere you want. You can hold Alt on your keyboard and move a point to create a new point. And lastly, you can select any point and press Delete to get rid of that point. If we take a look at the Details panel, we can see the first option is to select actors to ignore when tracing. To show an example, I'm going to drag in a sphere and move a point on top of it. As suspected, it jumped from the ground to the sphere. If you add the sphere as an actor to ignore by using the dropper, it snaps back to the ground. The next option is a unique one to this blueprint and it allows this road exterior to be very straight between spline points or very curved. The next variable is the road height scale, which at default is 12 and a half centimeters. And it follows the same logic I mentioned when talking about this variable in the main road system blueprint. Now for something I did not fully cover in the main road system is the update connected roads variable, which when turned on, updates all connected roads whenever the road gets updated. So let's add a road system and a road connection blueprint. Let's get them connected as we want. And now we will move the parking lot around and we can see the road connection does not change. We can manually update it by changing something in the road connection blueprint, or we can update it by checking the variable. You can leave the variable checked and it will dynamically update the connected road, but it may slow down your computer's performance. A better way is to check the variable every time you make an edit that will impact the connection. We can test it with the main road system over here as well, and it works the exact same way. The last option in the dynamic mesh options is the road points override, which allows you to have a little bit more precise movement of your road points. For the static mesh options, it is the same options I mentioned for the other two blueprints. And the last panel that says OSM will be discussed more in the next video in the series. It's an experimental free program we are currently testing in our Discord server, where all you have to do is enter a bot command and provide a latitude and a longitude, and it will return a TXT file ready to be pasted into Unreal Engine to recreate the roads of the area you provided. You can subscribe to the channel to get updates when new videos come out about all of our tools, and you can join our Discord to see the OSM bot for yourself. The last thing I want to show off is in the demo intersection map, where it shows how to make a four-way intersection. To break it down, you just have the main road system connected to a road connection, and then that connected to a square lot. The roads and connections get repeated another three times around the lot. And that's it. Hopefully this tutorial has shown you how roads in Unreal Engine could be made easily, and that this tool can make any type of road you can think of when you use a combination of the pack's three blueprints. I hope you liked the video, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below or on our Discord. And more than anything, I hope you enjoyed the purchase of this pack. It's been over a year in the making with all the tools and versions that came before it. So, thank you.